I think it's terribly dangerous for an artist to fulfill other people's expectations. If you feel safe in the area that you're working in, you're not working in the right area. Always go a little further into the water than you feel you're capable of being in. Go a little bit out of your depth. And when you don't feel that your feet are quite touching the bottom, you're just about in the right place to do something exciting. The way David works, he just keeps evolving, evolving, evolving. David's always looking for that new element and unique musicians to be the carriage for his new ideas. Maria Schneider is an amazing jazz composer. And how she could have been off my radar, I don't, I don't know, because uh, she suddenly uh, appeared in my life through David. And when I heard her compositions, it was everything David and I loved about big band music, that it was discordant and strange and ethereal. Out of the blue, David called, said, hello, <laughs> and, and then proceeded to start to talk to him about the idea of, that he had to collaborate on a song. David brought a little demo of Sue. So I listened to it and immediately heard this. I said, where do you want this to go? So it's, it's pretty bright, you know, sounding. And he said, oh, I want it to be really dark. So then I started playing around with ways in which I could make that that melody dark and I just fooled around over here and then I looked at him and I said, okay, let's try this. Maria Schneider said, you have to listen to this guy, Donnie McCaslin. Donnie had a band. You know when you said this band were trained jazz musicians. So we had more colors to the palette. Then I just worked on it on my own a little bit. And then David came over, and then I presented him with all these sketches of ideas and said, OK, let me play you lots of different things. And he would either say, yeah, yeah, I, I, oh, I really like that. You know, and if, if I got a real reaction of him, from him, then I said, OK, maybe that's the direction. So I just kind of tried to feel him out. Adventure, adventure, adventure. Let's try this, let's try that. Let's make it as far out as possible. Let's go somewhere no one's ever gone before, you know? When we recorded, it was like six hours or something. Yeah. So he comes out, then he lays down the vocal for the whole song, seven, eight minutes. So he's been in the studio all day long. <laughs> just no, we're there. just sitting there <laughs> listening, you know, taking this all in goes out a little one, two, three on the mic, and then boom. interview with Tony Visconti. The interviewer asked us both, you know, what was David's relationship to jazz music, something like that. And Tony's response was that he thought that that influence had always been there in David's music, but it was just sort of underneath the surface. And that now it was just, you know, out there. Of course, when this thing was released, there were all sorts of comments. Some people were just absolutely hating it, and some people were loving it, and some people didn't know what to think. This is David Bowie. He's not going to pigeonhole even himself. Imagine how ridiculous he would have looked, you know, if he kept dyeing his hair orange and he was 65 years old. 
orange hair and platform shoes, you know. He's smart. <laughs>